Christy Parson, last question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yesterday in his speech before Congress, the Israeli Prime Minister referred to the Palestinian right of return as a fantasy. And I wonder if that's a sentiment you agree with in any way. And also if you could outline for us a little bit how you, your views on that issue as well as the future of Jerusalem. And Mr. Prime Minister, if I may, you said at the top of this uh, press conference that uh, you consider the president's principles outlined last week to be bold and visionary and in fact what needs to be done. And I wonder if that means it makes you less open to the Palestinian campaign for recognition of statehood before the UN this fall. Thank you. My goal, as I said out in the speech I gave last week, is a Jewish state of Israel that is safe and secure and recognized by its neighbors and a sovereign state of Palestine uh, in which uh, the Palestinian people are able to determine their own fate and their own future. I am confident that can be achieved. Uh, it is going to require wrenching compromise by both sides. Uh, over the last decade, when negotiators have talked about how to achieve that outcome, now, there have been typically four issues that have been raised. One is the issue of what, what would the territorial boundaries of a new Palestinian state look like? Number two, how could Israel feel confident that its security needs were being met. Number three, uh, how would the issue of Palestinian refugees be resolved? And number four, the issue of Jerusalem. The last two questions are uh, extraordinarily emotional. Uh, they, they go deep into how both the Palestinians and uh, the Jewish people think about their own identities. Ultimately, they are going to be resolved by the two parties. I believe that those two issues can be resolved if there is the prospect and the promise that we can actually get to a Palestinian state and uh, a secure Jewish state of Israel. And it, uh, what my speech did was to say, Let's begin the work with the very hard-nosed but uh, transparent uh, and less, uh, perhaps less emotional issues of what would the territorial boundaries look like and what would Israeli security requirements uh, entail. And. Uh, I believe that if the Palestinians and the Israelis begin talking about those two issues and get some re resolution, they can start seeing on the horizon the possibility of uh, a peace deal. They will then be in a position to uh, have a what will be a very difficult conversation about refugees uh, and about Jerusalem. That's not something that any party from the outside is going to be able to impose on them. Uh, but. Uh, what I am absolutely certain of is that if they're not talking, uh, we're not going to make any progress. Uh, and neither the Israeli people or the Palestinian people will be well served. Uh, let me just make one more comment about uh, uh, the prospects for, for a serious peace uh, negotiation. Um, the Israelis are properly concerned about the agreement that's been made between Fatah and Hamas. Uh, Hamas has not renounced violence. Hamas is an organization that has thus far rejected the recognition of Israel as a legitimate state. It is very difficult for Israelis to sit across the table and negotiate with a party that is denying your right to exist and has not renounced the right to send missiles and rockets uh, into your territory. So uh, as much as uh, 
it's important for the United States as Israel's closest friend uh, and partner to remind them of the urgency of achieving peace. Uh, I don't want the Palestinians to forget that they have obligations as well. Uh, and they are going to have to resolve in a credible way uh, the meaning of this agreement between uh, Fatah and Hamas if we're going to have any prospect uh, for peace moving forward. As for the United Nations, uh, I've already said, I said in the speech last week, and I will repeat, uh, you know, the United Nations can achieve a lot of important work. Uh, what the United Nations is not going to be able to do is deliver a Palestinian state. The only way that we're going to see a Palestinian state is if uh, Israelis and Palestinians agree on uh, a just uh, peace. And so uh, I strongly believe that uh, for the Palestinians to take the United Nations route rather than the path of sitting down and talking with the Israelis is a mistake. That it does not serve the interests of the Palestinian people. It will not achieve their stated goal of achieving a Palestinian state. Uh, and the United States will continue to make that argument uh, uh, both in the United Nations uh, and uh, in our various meetings around the world. Uh, I believe that Hamas in its own description uh, of its agenda, uh, has not uh, renounced violence and has not recognized the state of Israel. And until they do, it is very difficult to expect Israelis to have a serious conversation because ultimately they have to have confidence that a Palestinian state is one that uh, is going to stick uh, to whatever bargain is struck. Uh, that uh, if they make territorial compromises, uh, if they uh, arrive at a peace deal, that in fact uh, that will mean the safety and security uh, of the Jewish people and of Israel. And uh, Hamas has not shown any willingness to uh, make uh, the kinds of uh, concessions that Fatah has. Uh, and you know, it's going to be very difficult for us to get a Palestinian partner on the other side of the table that is not observing the basic quartet principles that we both believe, uh, that both David and I believe in, uh, the need to renounce violence, uh, recognize the state of Israel, uh, abide by previous agreements. Uh, that is, is, I think, going to be a critical aspect uh, of us being able to jump, jumpstart this process once again. Thank you. I mean, I describe the president's speech as bold and visionary because I think it did an absolutely vital thing, which was to talk about 67 borders with land swaps. So, as the president said, if you think about what both sides absolutely need to know to start this process, those two things are in place. First, that the Israelis need to know that America and our allies like Britain will always stand up for Israel's right to exist, right to defend herself, right to secure borders. That is absolutely vital that the Israelis know that their security is absolutely key to us. They need to know that. But the second thing that needs to be done is the Palestinians need to know that we understand their need for dignity and for a Palestinian state uh, using the 67 borders as land swaps as the start point. That is, I think, what is so key to the speech that's been made. So neither side now has, I believe, the excuse to stand aside from talks. On the specific issue of uh, UN recognition, I mean, the president is entirely right that in the end, a Palestinian state will only come about if the Palestinians and the Israelis can agree to it coming about. That is the vital process that has to take place. As for Britain, we don't believe the time for making a decision about the UN resolution. There isn't even one there at the moment is right yet. We want to discuss this within the European Union and try and maximize the leverage and pressure that the European Union can bring, frankly, on both sides to get this vital process moving. Uh, both of us in recent days have been to uh, the Republic of Ireland. I went on part of the Queen's historic trip, and I know Barack has just returned from a very successful trip. And when you look at what had to happen in Northern Ireland in order for peace to come about, is there has to be some recognition and understanding on each side of the other side.
And that is what I think is so crucial in what the president is saying about uh, Hamas and Palestinian unity, uh, which should in some ways be a welcome development if the Palestinians can have one group of people, but not unless those group of people are prepared to uh, accept uh, some of what the people they're going to negotiate with desperately need. And that in the end is why the peace process in Northern Ireland was successful, because both sides had some understanding of what the other side needed for some dignity and for some peace. And that is what we badly need right now in the Middle East. And I think the President's speech has been a good step forward in really helping to make that happen. Uh, let Thank me just you. pick up uh, on what David said about Ireland. Uh, it was inspiring to see uh, after hundreds of years of conflict, people so rapidly uh, reorienting how they thought about themselves, how they thought about uh, those who they thought once were enemies. Uh, Her Majesty's visit had a profound effect uh, on the entire country. Uh, and so it was an enormous source of hope. Uh, and I think it's a reminder that as tough as these things are, uh, if you stick to it, uh, if people of goodwill remain engaged, uh, that uh, ultimately even the worst of conflicts can be resolved. Uh, but, it, but it is going to take time. Uh, and, uh, and I remain optimistic, but not naively so. This is going to be hard work, and each side is going to have to uh, look inward uh, to determine what is in their long-term interests uh, and not just what are in their short-term tactical interests, which uh, tends to perpetuate a conflict as opposed to solve it. Uh, and, and, and finally, let me also, David, I, just very briefly, thank you for expressing uh, your condolences and concern about the people of Missouri. Uh, we have been battered by some storms, uh, not just this week, but uh, over the last several months, uh, the largest death toll uh, and devastation that we've ever seen from tornadoes uh, in the United States of America. Knowing that uh, we've got friends uh, here in the United Kingdom uh, who care deeply uh, and who offer their thoughts and prayers uh, makes all the difference in the world. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. And the Guinness wasn't bad in Ireland either. It was very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Wrapping up that press conference between President Barack Obama and uh, Prime Minister David Cameron of Britain, uh, finishing up just shy of an hour, uh, interesting ending on the um, discussion domestically that we've been having That's about right. the terrible spate of storms uh, that have gone on and the death toll, as he said, um, knowing that you have friends means all the world. Uh, but it was also interesting, uh, a couple of hot topics from the reporters uh, that were able to ask questions. One, of course, Libya. What are we doing with Muammar Gaddafi? Is the escalation in Libya going to work? And would we, they be satisfied with Gaddafi staying in power? And David Cameron said that he's got to go. And the president saying that he's got to his capacity to send thugs against his own people has to be um, diminished. Also questions about um, the Middle East and a new renewed focus on a peace process for the Middle East. Uh, David Cameron, the UK Prime Minister, uh, congratulating the President for what he said, a bold, um, a bold spark. spark of progress in the region from the President's recent speech about that. It's also interesting because the President was very blunt when he said, and I just want to get his exact wording, the United Nations is not going to deliver a Palestinian state, advising the Palestinians against that push uh, in their plan to press the UN to recognize them right. uh, without some sort of agreement with Israel. Um, that is going to be a huge hot topic, but both of them agreeing that um, either side has to sort of recognize the dignity and the needs in order to make any type of progress. And the president saying it will take, quote, wrenching compromise on both sides for progress. Uh, and, and Kieran, you pointed out at the end of the speech they were talking about uh, what's happening in the United States with the tor tornadoes. In the beginning of uh, the prime minister of the UK's speech, he talked about two things the United States and the UK both need and are both dedicated to right now, jobs and security for peoples of both countries. So really a very 360-degree um, view of, of the, the common interests of these two mm -hmm. um, special allies. That's right. And then later today, as we said later on, uh, President uh, Obama will be addressing the joint uh, sessions of parliament, the joint uh, houses of parliament. So we'll, of course, follow that live as well. But we do want to bring you up to date on the latest uh, from Missouri as well as Oklahoma and the other states hit by severe weather over the past couple of days. We're going to take a quick break. It's 50 minutes past the hour. We'll be right back.